Hi everyone, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. We just finished up our annual show with the Wee Da Vinci Academy with the artwork that the children have created uh, in acrylic on canvas. And I've got kids ages five and a half to age 16. Most of them are under the age of 10, so their artwork is pretty darn amazing. And I'll show you just a few pieces as we, as we go. Uh, today we're going to actually do one of the Wee Da Vinci um, paintings that we did this year in acrylic on black canvas. And so I've painted a canvas in black acrylic, not black gesso, but gr black acrylic paint so that the background is black and so that all the colors will just pop like crazy when we put them on. There's a few little ways that we have to deal with things a little bit differently when we're painting on black canvas. So we'll get to that in just a moment. So the first thing I'd like to mention um, is this painting behind me. I'm just finishing it up. It might look a little bit familiar to some of you as uh, I started this several lessons ago on, on my channel here. And so if you want to watch it, there will be a link at the end of this video that you can click on and watch the beginning, which was a really loose rendering of this image. And then I got carried away and made it a little bit tight. Okay, well, it's beautiful. I love it. It's very colorful, and uh, it will hopefully be available here shortly on my Etsy site at nettykstudio.etsy.com. So let's take a look at what we're doing. I've got some actual lemons. I try to do that in the class. I get the actual thing. You want to look at it if you can. We've got a couple of lemons. We've got um, this beautiful, wonderful, tealy-looking um, vase. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of even it out a little bit. I don't want to get too carried away with all the weird shape, but we'll use this kind of as an example, and then we'll get going. Now, what I put out was is um, some acrylic paint, and when you have a fancy French dog, here, Coco. When you have a fancy French dog, this is Coco Chabot, uh, you have these little trays that their food comes in. Now, he's not uh, spoiled anymore. We've got him on just regular kibbles. But uh, this is what the soft food comes in, and they make really good trays for your acrylic paint. And I'll tell you why in a second. Now, I also can use cat food cans. You can use anything, but recycle. Enjoy tiny little things. I put my paint inside. This one has got Indian yellow, lemon yellow, and some um, white in this one. And then I have some other colors and some various different ones. So here's the cool part. This is from a previous lesson. And so all I have to do, if the paint is dry on these particular ones, is peel them out and reuse them. It's pretty darn cool. And then you don't have to toss them out. You can just keep going, and they just keep going and going and going because they peel out. I'm going to peel one out and see if it works. Then you just toss out the paint. Okay, I'm going to put the dog down for a second, and I'm going to show you how it peels out. No growling. There's a neighbor dog that's barking, so he's talking to him. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night, last night about, uh, well, it was kind of at dusk, I hear this little and I go to close the window, and there's three deer out in the side yard, so that was kind of cool. Anyway, here it is. I've got this paint, which is almost dry. I take it like this, and then I just peel the paint right out of the, out of the container. Isn't that neat? Then you have these really kind of cool little paint, little discs that you probably could use in an art project somewhere. Okay. Here we go. So uh, I'm going to remove this one, uh, and uh, I've just got to sign it, and then we'll we'll get it out there and make it available for somebody. Some lucky person. So I've got a jar of water, and I've got my black canvas that has had a little bit of time to dry. It's a little bit sticky, but oh well, we'll, we'll work on it. Here's the deal. When you have yellow paint on your, uh, you want to paint something that's yellow, won't that be great? Um, I want you to, to remember that yellow is transparent, and it doesn't matter if it's in acrylic paint or in oil paint. It's a transparent color, and uh, you have to do something in order for it to not just the background just to show through. This is a solid object. This is not a transparent object. We've got to make sure that we do that. So I'm going to have my brush, and I'm going to look at my lemon here. Uh, I'll, I'll do a couple of different sizes. I think I'm going to point this one that direction, and I'm going to take a um, some white. White is an opaque color, and it's going to cover up some of that black. So I'm going to start over here, 
and we're going to put some white in the shape of this particular lemon. It always helps to look at, at your subject. Now for me, I have done so many lemons that I'm starting to get to where I have it memorized, the shape of the, the lemon memorized, and so I don't have to really worry about, you know, getting it right every time. Well, and they're all slightly different if you've ever looked at them at the produce uh, um, department. My produce guy is uh, kind of a, uh, curious every time I come in uh, because my husband tells tells him that I don't eat vegetables I'm trying uh, but I come in and I buy all these fruits and vegetables and they all go to rot by the time I get around to uh, wanting to eat them because they are on my still life setup and so <laughs> they don't get eaten they just get painted but they're very beautiful all right, so I've got that shape of this one, and then I'm going to, actually I'll use the same lemon, who cares, uh, and I'll put this one a little bit like, maybe like that. Now normally you'd have a full setup on this, and then I'm going to use that shape and move it up like this and, and pretend that that's behind this one. I'll make it a little taller, and sometimes I'll leave a little bit of a, a line between them just for style, but um, well, and we just go like this and, and fill it in, fill in the shape. One of the problems with acrylic is um, when we want to make the outside edge fuzzy, it makes it a little bit challenging because the paint dries so fast, and so uh, it's really a challenge. You can you can kind of fuzz it out. Okay, take a Q-tip or your finger and make it just a little bit fuzzy by putting a little bit of water on the end of your finger. Let's test that out and see if that's possible. You gotta be careful so, so that it's not quite so sharp. Okay, I like that, that worked. Let's see if we can fuzz out this one while we're at it. It might have dried so fast that it doesn't work. But you can see how that, just fuzz that out a little bit. I like that very much, I, I'm just excited. We're all learning together, everybody. So, um, you know, acrylic has not always been my uh, my medium. I'm an oil painter, but when you're doing children's book illustration and that sort of thing, I tried it in oil. It just didn't fly, so I moved to uh, moved to the acrylic paint, and I just really like it a lot better when it comes to the brightness of children's books, and it's also easier for the printer to uh, get a really good crisp line for um, for illustration purposes. So. Uh, live and learn. You know, how many illustrations did I do in oil and then went, that's not working. I, I like the acrylic for that. Okay, so let's do one more and uh, I'm going to get this, let's see if this is a different one. Oh yeah, it is a little different. And I'm going to point that one, maybe it's just straight across. So I'll take this lemon down and <laughs> this is a bit unconventional, isn't it? And I'm going to go straight across and I think this time I'm going to put it, oh, I'm going to set this one in front of everybody. All right, so I'm going to go over the top and be able to see it like that. And I'm moving it up and uh, I give it its little shoulder. It's so funny because you are it's a very warm day today, which is odd. We've still got at least one pile of snow left in the north side of the yard. Um, in the forested area, and so it's uh, the paint dries very fast when it's warm in the studio. I don't have the ultimate north light studio in my uh, in my home. I will get one someday when I'm rich and famous. But uh, so I've got a, a let's see east facing window, and in the morning it's very very hot in here. And it gets hotter as the summer progresses. Okay, now let's remember that little finger into the water. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this to soften the edge. Why do I soften the edge? Well, if, if I wanted to stylistically, you know, make it really sharp, I'm going to actually add a little bit to this one because I like that softness. So I'm going to add a little extra so that I can soften it. You just got to do it immediately, okay? You can't, can't wait because it'll dry. And so uh, I'm going to actually have to put
put more layers on it after this one dries because it's it's still picking up the black through the back and so we'll we'll let that dry but we have another project to do while it's drying so um anything that goes back into space that is round particularly and most things are when you think about uh, your face or a fruit or a vase or anything it's going to have a soft edge not a hard edge if you put a hard edge on it looks like a paper cutout and we don't want that we want it to look as though it's really actually going back into space so that's what I'm saying so I'm taking some purple paint this is actually just a deep violet color and I think what I will do is I'm going to make this uh, with I'm going to add just a touch of white to it so that you can see it and so here I have this another little container oh this is a yummy color all right and I'm going to decide where my vase goes and so I'm going to paint this like this in this violet color uh, that is really a wonderful color it's not too dark now remember when you're painting with acrylic the paint dries darker when it dries all right so i think it's reverse when with different types of paints uh we've got the oil paint usually dries uh, uh pretty much the same as what you put down it doesn't uh, change color so much it will when it gets matte okay there's certain colors that dry really matte and then when you put a varnish on them boom they come back out but uh in acrylic colors they dry darker this one's almost getting a little bit of a shine just because I put a little tiny white on my brush. Happy accidents happen. And so um, I'm making this bottle. Now, if you want an easier way to make sure your bottle isn't crooked, uh, put a, a center line down your bottle. And you could do it in chalk on top of that. You can do it a chalk on a dry canvas and then, um, you know, make sure it's right. But I, I find this works just fine. And then I'm going to put a kind of a, a rounded top, and then we'll put a, a tiny ellipse on the top of the bottle. But I think that's pretty close. Isn't that beautiful? I just think that's so nice. That's really nice. Okay, now I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to take a look at this and see. I'm going to allow this to dry for just a few minutes. Hey, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, let's take a look at what we're going to do in the background i have a paint that is in um, this the molten metals from chroma and this one particularly is in copper i'm going to use a larger brush this time this is a one inch uh, flat brush and i'm going to decide where my horizon line is going uh, i don't want it at the halfway mark if possible so I think maybe on this one, do we put it down lower? No, let's put it higher. So I'm going to come up along this bottle. And for the sake of easy, easiness, I'm going to make the horizon line or the table line straight. And I'll just come around this. Again, this is a transparent color as well. You can really see the black coming through. But I love this, the effect of the copper paint. I love metal paints anyway. I'm, you remember the apples that I'm doing? Uh, they're, they've got a metal uh, oil paint background on them, and they're really coming along. We'll have another peek at those shortly. Uh, in an upcoming episode, as they come close to the finish line, now you can take an, a ruler to make this a little bit straighter. That's a good idea. But uh, for right now, we'll just do it like this. And so um, I'm just coming alongside like that. And if I mess up, I just keep changing <laughs> change the table. I just keep moving it up and up until I get it right. This is sliding around a little bit. Let's see. Is that? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to put the top on that silly uh, lemon here. I better do that, too, in white. And you can see how beautiful that is already just by by putting in a little copper, copper table. And... Uh, Again, if you're using a nice straight brush that's large, you can actually be more accurate than if you used a little brush that's two hairs and some air, you know, like Bob Ross used to always say. Now, uh, don't forget, you've got a cast shadow that needs to happen on your little uh, articles here. So, uh, and you've already got the black paint 
So let's uh, not mess that up. Let's take advantage of that. And remember, it's about, if the light's coming from over here, say, we're going to pretend it's coming from over there, from the right side of the canvas. And I'm going to now come down here on the bottom. Can you guys see that? Okay, I think so. I'm going to just lift this up a tiny bit. Hopefully it's not too shiny. Uh, and then I'm going to think about right dead center of that, um, that lemon, that white lemon. I'm going to begin um, moving the shadow by just leaving out a particular shape like this. Now this shape would be like that and it would kind of come around a little bit like this, okay? Then I'm going to go down here and then I'll think about what that shape would be, but it's an overlapping shadow, so I'll go like that. And I'm painting what isn't. What isn't there? I'm painting the negative shape around the shadow, okay? The negative shape is just the shape of, of whatever it is left behind. And so I know this bottle is probably going to leave a shadow that will be pretty darn long. Uh, and so, oh, this is really getting awkward here. And then I'll go like this. And uh, really what I'd like to also remember on this particular group is that um, it, I need that shot I need that shadow line not to be super sharp so let's try it again I'm gonna clean my finger off first because it's got purple paint on it still and now I'm going to do the same thing with the shadow I'm going to soften up the shadow a little bit I might have to go back in with a little more black later on because I'm let's see how our lemons are doing let's see if they're dry enough yet to go on to the next step Yeah, they are. Wow, that dried pretty fast. Okay, so next I'm going to grab another little bit of a paper towel. Go through a lot of paper towels, too. And I'm going to now take my little yellow dish, which has Indian yellow. Uh, that's a bit of an orangish yellow. And, of course, our, our light yellow and our white. Um, now I'm going to take the, uh, the kind of light lemony yellow. And I'm going to give this a base color. Let's just do one at a time. Meanwhile, I'm going to turn this whoop, turn this up a little bit. And of course, I this is the one that I forgot to do the the nub on the top. So let's get that one first. There. Okay, got that one back in. And we have our our lemon yellow. I'm going to put that and really just kind of cover up this particular lemon with the middle or the light lemon yellow. It's not super, um, super light. Well, it kind of is actually. You could go with a, a middle tone yellow a little bit better probably. And um, there are a special material uh, or a medium called uh, glazing medium or you know they're just uh, mediums for, for acrylic paint that will extend the drying time so that you have a little more time to work with it. I do like to use that if I can, uh, if, I, if I have a ho really hot day particularly. So look how bright that is. That's super bright, but I'm going to now add a little bit of the lemon yellow into the side of this where I think the, the light, or it's away from the light. Indian yellow. A darker yellow and I'm, I'm realizing it's not quite dry back here so uh, I'm picking up some of the paint that uh, needs to dry just a little more like that okay well we'll correct it I'm gonna wait till that's a little more dry before I mess with it this one's much more dry so uh, let's give this one I'm gonna put a little bit of the Indian yellow into the lemon yellow this time because I feel like that's just too bright and so uh, we'll put, just dull it down just a little bit by putting the Indian yellow in. I like that much better. You want to have a place to go with it. You don't want to just, yeah, that's better. You don't want to start with your brights and have nowhere to go. So I kind of messed that up. Again, we're all learning together, everybody. I think I've done this enough times I should know better. So this one, I just, the, all of the kids did so well with this particular image. They even put it in the local paper. That was awesome. There we go. 
So you see that's a little bit darker than this one. I hope you can see that. And we'll come up like this. Some of the kids did some stylistic moves, a little bit more like Gauguin and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, now, uh, before we get too far, I'm going to now go back down in here with the Indian Yellow. One, it was a hard, difficult lesson to try to figure out what the shadow is on a lemon. And we've tried everything from, um, you know, the lavender, because that's a complementary color, uh, violet, dark violet, and if you overmix that, that turns to mud and your lemon really looks like it's rotting. So uh, I think the, the color that I'm kind of preferring is this Indian yellow. But now I'm going to try one more thing just to experiment. I'm going to add some Indian yellow with our mixture of, um, with a little bit of violet. Okay, Indian yellow with a little bit of our light yellow with a little bit of violet. What does that look like? Um, now I'm going to wipe the brush off and then I'll put a little bit of that violet as it turns back into space. I don't just put a violet shadow in there. I add, I do the lemon yellow, I put the Indian yellow as it turns in kind of the dark, as it gets darker. And then I add Indian yellow to violet to make it turn under like that. And we'll just keep playing back and forth with it a little bit. So I'll, I'll just make sure that we don't have a sharp edge as we turn uh, by moving it back and forth like this. Good. As Now as it's drying a little bit, I'm going to brighten it up. Okay, it's actually a cadmium yellow light, everybody. That's what I just uh, used on there, and that's a heavy, heavy body cadmium yellow light. I like it a lot. And I'm just kind of wherever the lemon starts coming forward a little ways, I'm adding that with some white, and then I'm going to allow that to dry a little bit, and we'll do the other lemon, and we'll start working in some shadows. All right, so cadmium yellow light. Let's just do the whole thing here. This is cadmium yellow light with a tiny bit of the um, Indian yellow. It gets so confusing sometimes. Uh, and then we'll put that in, just kind of cover it up. You can still see there's, wherever I didn't get a really solid base of white, you can still see that black shining through. It's just crazy how thin it is. It's not thin and it isn't power, it isn't a lack of pigment power, but it's a lack of opacity. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can't see through it. Opacity means it's solid and you can't see through it. So, uh, one other way to get around that is just to put more paint on your brush, okay? So like if I scoop up a huge amount of yellow and put that on there, it works as well. We'll go over here. Now, before it dries, before it dries, I'm going to add my Indian yellow to it down here. You can also use orange, uh, and sometimes there's a green tinge to it. Make sure you really look at what you're painting. I'm not doing a very good job of that today, but that's okay. Again, it kind of looks like a five-year-old did it, but oh well, it was, it's pretty nice. All right, now, uh, here's the next thing. I'm going to now add more white to my lemon yellow, or my cadmium yellow light, or whatever I have. And now I'm going to put in a little bit of a highlight where I think the light is hitting. Right there. A couple of different spots. And then I work the edges of that highlight out in kind of a textured fashion. That works. A little bit like that, a little bit like that. And I think I'll put in, I'm going to add one more kind of a, a yellow color, which is just slightly a little bit darker than uh, what I had before. And we'll see what it is. It's also a different type of paint. Okay, yeah, that's better. All right, I had just a little bit of the wrong color there. Oh, and there it's picking up on pulling off the canvas again and uh, leaving me with that black underpainting. So... Take your time, everybody. Let that white dry. Good night. I'm so impatient sometimes. Now, I'm just kind of uh, moving the dark and the light together by putting the cadmium yellow medium 
as it goes into the light a little bit. So I have a dark, a medium, dark, a middle tone, and a light, and a highlight. Uh, I'm going to put another little bit of violet again with our um, yellow. This time I'm going to put it into the cadmium yellow medium. So cadmium yellow medium with our violet color. And I'm going to think about, does anything cast a shadow? Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to darken right behind that lemon so that it um, will will show up and pop forward. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to actually go back in because I really like that color. That works out good. So that's your cadmium yellow medium with a little bit of violet in it. And then I'll pick up the cadmium yellow uh, by itself, cadmium yellow medium, and begin working it. It can really start looking dirty, everybody, if you um, get too much of a brownish color into it. So we might uh, glaze a little green over the top, but here's that, uh, here's the shadow color again as we come down. And uh, make sure your brush is still wet. We'll go like this, add a little bit. I'm just fiddling around a little bit. I'm going to let that dry and we're going to move on to the vase now. Okay, now the vase is a bluish color. It has... I've got a phthalo blue, I have a uh, turquoise green, and a lime green that I'm going to work with today. And so uh, let's grab our uh, larger brush. I've got my one inch brush that we just used with the copper, and I rinsed that out. And so I'm going to uh, put in now a little bit of the phthalo blue along the side that is the darkest, or um, the side where the light is supposed to hit. Now I know that's a little bit weird, but that's just the way um, it is. Glass will have a dark side where the light is supposed to hit, right on the edge. And I think uh, we'll put that right in the middle of there. See, I'm just messing around with this big, big brush. And the next thing I'll do is I'll pick up the phthalo uh, uh, green, no, turquoise green. This is beautiful. Uh, who makes this? Liquitex. It's a, a liquid, gold, liquid um, color. And I'm just going to kind of stroke it down like this. Probably need to move to my smaller brush. Like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the phthalo blue. And I think I'll, I'll try out a little bit of phthalo blue with white on this side. I like that. And you can see I've got white on one side of my brush and then the phthalo blue. Uh, why did I do that? Well, probably it was an accident. <laughs> no. Uh, I've got a little chunk of paint under here. So uh, what I want is I want the light to come through. It's going to hit right here and come out on the other side like this. So I'm working it around a little bit this way. And then I'm going to just take my, my brush, clean it off a little bit, and see what happens if I brush it in kind of feeling as though it's got a curve going around this way. This is just an experiment. We'll just see what happens. And so next uh, we'll go back in again and pick up a little more of that uh, turquoise green. I'm just going to put a little bit in like this. Try not to make a big mess. That would be good. There's a little uh, around the bottom like that. It just kind of has a, well, a light that pulls up like this. So I've based it out virtually in uh, that phthalo or turquoise green. And then I'm going to play a little bit more with the phthalo before it dries. It's a little bit dry already because when you're doing glass, make sure you take time to really look at the glass that you're working with because it's uh, it will tell you a lot. It will tell you a lot. Okay, so uh, we'll go up here and we'll make this little um, a little bit of an ellipse right here. Just a flat and circle in perspective. I might add just a little lime green to it. And we'll go like this. Just kind of pull it like that. Isn't that pretty? I like it. And so then I'll drag, I'll drag it down a little bit like this. I might take my finger and do that just a little bit. Let's go one more time. There, I love that. Okay. And then on the other side, no white. I'm going to take the uh, lime green with the uh, 
turquoise green and I'm going to take a little bit and just put a little on this side just for fun. This is just where the light shines through and comes out on the other side. Want to know what it is. I'm going to now uh, make the letters kind of a letter C right here and then a backwards letter C. Why? So I don't point the ellipse and make it look like a football. I'm going to make it look as though there's water in the little um, in the little bottle. So I've just made a, a letter C and a backwards letter C and then I've connected them up in a round form there like that. And I'm going to take that same thing and come down underneath like that. And while I've got it on my brush, I'm, I'm going to re restate that really dark side like this. Now, I'll take my phthalo blue and I'll put in a little bit of uh, white to it. And I'm going to think about the, a little bit more white, and think about that, the plane of the water right here. And I'll, I'll start out really with a, a lighter version of the paint in a downward stroke, and then I'll, I'll take a few little strokes sideways like this. The top part of the water right on the edge will have a lighter part right here, so I'll just make it nice and light on the edge. Still keeping in mind you're looking through the bottle, so don't make it just blatantly white. It's behind the glass. And so I'm going to do it again so you can see it. There we go. It's kind of a lime green like that. I think I'll take that all the way up to the top. Piddle around with it. Take a look at your jar and or your vase and see what is that really doing there. Okay. There we go, like that. And so the next thing is that I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight. Where does the highlight go? The highlight, as uh, Helen Van Wyck used to say, the highlight goes on the apex and the convex surface in direct line with a light. What? All right. It just where the shoulder sticks out the farthest in line with the light is where the highlight will go. And if the light is shining over here, it's going to hit a little bit on that edge and it's going to come out over here. It's going to shine out a little bit there. It's going to be uh, right about there. And that's the lightest part. I'm going to kind of fuzz it out a little bit and make it break it and make it again, uh, which helps the thing look like it, it looks like it belongs there. The other thing I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the green and turquoise with the white and make a, a little bit of a shape here to where it doesn't look like this is separate and cut out. I'm going to drag that right over the top of it. Magic. There it is. Okay, what what's behind here? It's the bronze, everybody. So if I don't see bronze somewhere in that jar, it's not going to look like it's opaque. You have to kind of see what's behind a little bit in order for it to make sense. So I'm going to put just a few little indication of that, that bronze color into the paint where it might be the most opaque, which is at the top, especially right here, and not any more, not higher than where the horizon line is, because it's only right there below the horizon line. I've got a little bit of that that color right there. Okay. Last bit. I want to make that light kind of glow a little bit farther over here. Just not as bright as over here. It's going to be slightly less as it comes out of the jar. And then on top of that, I want to put a little bit of that lime green right there so it looks like it's kind of glowing. Maybe a little tiny bit right here. Yeah. Just don't over mix. It should be vibrant. It should be loose. It shouldn't. You shouldn't be mixing and mixing your paint because it will kill the paint. It'll kill the color. Just keep it nice and loose and keep adding, adding layers. All right. Hey, another thing I wanted to mention to you guys is if you have uh, if you paint in both acrylic and in oil. Make sure that you have dedicated brushes for acrylic and for oil because if you put an oil painting, uh, if you br use your brushes for oil, you really shouldn't use them for acrylic afterwards because uh, it just makes a big mess. Okay, they just, it doesn't, uh, your brushes just don't recover.
And then I'll go back in with the white and put in that highlight again. One more time. It starts really popping out because it's, it really is three-dimensional. You could be blind and still be able to see what this is by just touching it when it's dry. And now I'm just uh, scumbling a little bit of that highlight by making almost like small dots. And, and it's just a gentle highlight. It's not a super shiny fruit. It just has a gentle highlight as it goes back, comes up in line with the light. All right, everybody, that's all I'm going to do for today. I hope you learned something. And if you did and you'd like to learn more, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.